Welcome to DataTrue Tutorials. My name is Leonard, and today we're going to be going over how to train a semantic segmentation model on DataTrue's Nexus platform. So a uh, semantic segmentation model is trying to outline specific objects from their background or their environment, um, particularly by indicating the pixel areas where that object is. Semantic segmentation can be used for highlighting humans in their background environments, such as highlighting football players from the football pitch, uh, which will be what we're doing today. So today, what we're going to have to do is create a new project for our semantic segmentation project. So we'll select Create New Project. Then we'll fill out the project name, which will be Football Segmentation. And then we'll also select the project type, which is a segmentation project. And then we can go ahead and click Next Step. Once the project has been created, what we're going to have to do uh, is upload images for our project. These images are going to come from uh, recorded videos of football games and taking each of these individual frames. So we'll now take those images and upload them to the project's data set. We can go there by selecting the Upload button. After we've selected the Upload button, we can go ahead and drag the files into the upload assets bar. So I'm going to drag those files in, click next. And we can also assign them to a group. Um, this will help with file storage management. Um, and in this case, I'll name them football video frames so I can locate them later. And then we'll select upload files. So now that the images have been uploaded, we can now go ahead to the next step, which is annotating our images. So we can double click or select the annotator on the left sidebar. I've double clicked and now I'm going to add the tag names that will be relevant. So for the purposes of this demonstration, we'll do team one and team two to indicate uh, which teams the players are on. Now we can add, get to annotating these individual players. So we have a few different tools on our platform such as the polygon, paintbrush, and free draw. Uh, these are all different mask annotation tools, but for our purposes today, we're going to be using IntelliBrush, which is our intelligent annotation tool, which can help to rapidly annotate mask annotations with just a few clicks. So in this case, I'm going to left click here on this redshirted player and indicate that as team one. And then I'll go ahead and change the tag at the bottom right uh, to team two, and then annotate this player in the black uniform as team two. And we'll go ahead and confirm that annotation. So now uh, what we'll do is go ahead and swap to a project where all the data sets have been fully annotated. And as you can see, what we've done is also added a few new tags, such as goalkeeper, goal bar, the ground, the referee, et cetera. And this demonstrates that you know, our data set is fully annotated and is ready for training. So now we're going to go into actually training our model. So we'll select workflow. Uh, select uh, Create Workflow, and this will bring us to a Training Workflow recommendation page. The whole point of this is to easily select the relevant hyperparameters to train our semantic segmentation model. In this case, uh, it's asking us what model size we prefer. Uh, we are planning to process these images offline after games, so we want high accuracy, and therefore we select a large model. Um, with the same reasoning, we want to select highest accuracy rather than balanced performance. We can now go ahead and build the model workflow, and it will provide us a fully functional model workflow that we can edit further if we would like to. So for each block in this page, we can, like the dataset block or the augmentation block, we can go ahead and edit any relevant hyperparameters that we need. So in this case, for augmentations, we, we might want to add motion blur uh, as a data augmentation due to the camera movement or player movement that can occur. We might also want to add any brightness or contrast to account for outdoor lighting or any outdoor lighting conditions. And finally, we can also edit any model hyperparameters as well, such as training steps or batch size. Um, in this case, it won't be necessary. Um, so we can go right ahead and select run training. We will also change our checkpoint strategy to highest accuracy because we're looking to save the checkpoint that has achieved the highest accuracy in the training. And then we can click Next. We will 
train this model on Datatree Cloud. And we can also change the number of GPUs and also the GPU type, but in this case, it won't be necessary. So we'll go next and start training. So now we'll actually jump to a training that has already been completed with that same set of workflow settings. And as you can see, it shows the loss curves and the relevant information to determine whether your model has been trained well, just based on regular computer vision metrics. We can also go to our advanced evaluation tab, which will show the model predictions over each of the training checkpoints. And it shows that the model steadily improves and achieves a relatively strong performance in prediction. We can also jump to our confusion matrix, which indicates the classific classification accuracy. And uh, we can see on the green diagonal that we're actually achieving quite a high accuracy across almost all the classes. So we can deem this to be a good training uh, such that we can actually use it in production or uh, deploy it. So to deploy it, we'll jump to the artifacts page from the left sidebar and we see the artifact that has come out of that training that we've just looked at. We can select export artifact and this will allow us to export the model in various different uh, model frameworks such as Onyx, TensorFlow, PyTorch, TFLight, CoreML. Uh, with CoreML uh, specifically, we might want to deploy this model on Mac devices or Apple devices. So we can go ahead and select generate and this will generate the model file that you can download like the ones above in the PyTorch category. So we also have advanced exports as well, uh, which will allow you to quantize your model to Flow16 or Int8 or prune your model as well. Um, this makes your model more accessible for uh, mobile devices or other embedded devices. And lastly, we can also create a deployment, which will be a model hosted on a cloud GPU. Uh, when you select create deployment, you all you have to do is fill out the, your name, maybe your, a version for a version control. Uh, you can even change the region so that the, the GPU uh, is hosted in a location that's near to you for a reduced network lat latency. But besides that, it's relatively easy to set up and all you'll have to do is select next and it will create that deployment for you. Lastly, we can also go into our integrations tab uh, to learn how to install our Python SDK or Datatree CLI. Uh, this will enable easy integrations with the platform without having to access it through the website. From this project, you've been able to train a semantic segmentation model to be able to pick out objects from its environment. Thank you for watching and make sure to explore the other resources on the Datatree website. Mm -hmm.